Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is Joey Galvez, one half of your host of Explain Yourself, and I want to let you guys know about a really cool book from our friend of the show, Eli Shockey. This one is called The Grey Luck, and it's a story where magic is a commodity. Potions are sold at corner stores. Orcs and dwarves earn a living in cubicles, not on the battlefields. But there are those who resist the house's magic laws, branded a criminal and forced to live as a want for hire. There is a spell slinger they call the Greylock. Check this one out. You guys can pre-order issue three right now with code JAN241939. And make sure you guys are heading over to your favorite LCS and letting them know that you want Greylock number three. And maybe pick up the first two issues. Uh, you could do that at the Scout web store. So make sure you guys are grabbing the Greylock number three, JAN241939 at previewsworld.com. Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, is... Is Sesame... Um, this is the second time I've heard someone use the term Uncle Clarence in the past two days in Carta. Yes. <laughs> Which is pretty bizarre, actually. Yeah, um, it, so... Anyways, um, folks, if, if you want to watch the episode that we're talking about, please email me, mike at cullenpark.com. I'll send it to you. Um, if you can't find it. Um, which is... We probably can, but... Um, yeah, but I mean, sometimes yeah, people have... You if, you know, want, if you want the link or whatever. Or if sometimes people are just too busy to look it up themselves. Um, yeah. So... <laughs> In other yeah. words, lazy. No, I'm joking, folks. You're not lazy. No, not. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, today on the show, we are covering the 1994 pilot for the television show 704 Hauser, which um, was a spinoff in location of... Of um, all in the family and Archie Bunker's place, so because the location seven or four Hauser was Archie's old house. So, oh, okay. Yeah, that's why in the show Joey Stivic visits, and that's uh, Gloria and Mike's kid. So. Oh, see, I didn't, I didn't know all that. I just yeah, just watched it. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just watched. Yeah, I didn't know that there was like a history behind all that. Yeah. Cool. I remember when this came out, uh, weirdly, I was in high school, and I remember watching this when it originally aired. So That's pretty cool, yeah. Yeah. So, um, the concept of the show is kind of a little bit of a reversal of All in the Family, where you have a liberal dad and a conservative son, as opposed to the other way, with the, the um, conservative dad and liberal daughter and son-in-law yeah kind of had a family ties thing to it seemed felt like a little bit as well hmm. you know like conservative son you know type of thing oh yeah like like definitely this was you know a little bit after uh family ties probably hmm. went off the air just about the time it did um oh, okay. and i'm sure that influenced it also um the Character, the main family are African American as opposed to uh, white, um, so you got that going. <laughs> so um, the the uh, 
it, it was kind of like a response to at that point um, Norman Lear, who created the show, who also created All in the Family, <clears throat> among a um, among millions of other shows he produced on television in history. He's probably the most prolific sitcom producer in the history of television. Oh yeah. Um, and he's still alive and doing it at ninety nine or a hundred years old. Oh jeez. Yeah. He does it with a actually. He does a lot of the stuff with a guy from Toledo that I can't remember the name of right now, but I'll look it up before the end of the episode. <laughs> um, so <laughs> the um, he he basically decided to create this show. Um, I'm sharing this little bit of trivia, even though I normally share trivia at the end, but there's not much trivia here. Um, basically, they had the set from All in the Family and Archie Bunker's place in storage, and. Uh, they wanted to make use out of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So they created the show, but he also was influenced by the fact that talk radio at that time was getting big with like Rush Limbaugh and the like, um, conservative talk radio that is. And to kind of uh, comment on that, along with the uh, younger African Americans who were leaning more conservative at the point, not all of them were, but you know, there were some out there that were pretty outspoken. So he wanted to try to, talk about that in society and try to address it the show obviously didn't it only lasted six episodes so it it didn't have the uh staying power at the time it was just kind of not really the right time to do a show like this Hmm. it was a little bit of ahead of its time i think where it was like people just weren't ready for that Plus, it was kind of a rehash of All in the Family, but just, you know, roles reversed and stuff. And so people were like, well, you know, if I want to watch that, I'll just watch some reruns of All in the Family, you know? So, yeah. yeah. Hmm. But, yeah, that's that's I the like, that's I the like memory it. I have of the time of why it didn't last. So. Yeah. So, anyways, what were your initial thoughts here on this? <clears throat> I mean, I liked it. I thought it was really funny. Um you know, I, I had, um, you know, the, the timing was pretty good, you know, like with the jokes and, uh, uh, you know, good banter, um, you know, it didn't really feel forced like some of the shows we watched. It was kind of yeah, kind of natural. I mean, some of the jokes, they fell flat here and there, mm-hmm. but overall, you know, I, I think it was like the pace. And then again, you said this is a guy who's been making TV shows forever. So, oh, well, yeah. And you he know, directed he probably, this episode too, so, so was, he probably knows what works and what doesn't, you know, as far as like timing and all, all that kind. Of, sorry if there's stuff in the background. There's, oh no, that's know, fine. And I, I've already told him that recording. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I can't hear anything, and hopefully the folks don't. So we're good. okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, since he's done like a million shows, he probably just knows what works and what doesn't, as far as like pacing is concerned and timing. Because you know, this episode was twenty three minutes long and. You know, I didn't feel like I was like dragging to watch it. Whereas no. some shows we watch are like 19 minutes long. And I'm like, just can't wait for it to end, you know? That yeah. thing. <laughs> so, you know, I think it, I thought it was pretty cool. Plus, you know, it's got the dude from, um, uh, what was the show? Um, really famous. Good Time? Was it Good Time? Yeah, Times? Good Times. So another Norman, yeah, yeah. Another, another Norman Lear produced show. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, I love that. And plus, he was in Coming to America. He was a great man. Yeah, movie. this was like. I mean, not right after, but within ten years after that. So it was kind yeah, of yeah, well, yeah, it was it was John that. Amos, um, who yeah, there you go, you know, John was, Amos. Yeah. yeah, so he was in it. Um, you know, um, the woman from um, uh, News Radio was in it. Yeah, Attorney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, L- luckily, yeah. luckily, though, the show did get canceled because then she got News Radio. So true. Yeah, <laughs> and then she was in like Liar Liar, I think, which was you know, was, like, and she was on ER for years too after that. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, you know, yeah. she's a really good actor. I like her a lot too. So um, you know, I was a little bit kind of somewhat triggered just by like the whole conservative like thing because it's just like mm-hmm. I know it's not my place to say something, but like at the same time, it's like I do feel like an outside perspective is good like sometimes insider perspective is good sometimes outsider yeah perspective is good so i know that's not my place to say anything in some sense of the word but in other sense of the word i can sort of see from the outside i think anyone i think anyone is of a minority who's a conservative is just delusional that's just my opinion like no matter how smart they are like they could be yeah. book smart they could have straight a's that's fine but like it's just far as like 
seeing reality as it is, I don't, I just don't think anyone who like has like common sense could actually be a conservative in this and, world and be a minority. Yeah, especially, <laughs> especially today, even more yeah. so than in 1994. Yeah. Maybe 94 was a little bit more of a, of a, like a gray area maybe, but I don't, even then maybe not, but, uh, so like when I was watching, I'm just like, this guy has no idea. Like mm-hmm. he's totally barking up the wrong tree here. <laughs> like, yeah, and that's the uh, like, the son is played by T. E. Russell. Um, mm-hmm. the son, uh, who's named is uh, um, Thurgood Marshall, aka Goody Cumberbatch. Yeah, the, I was gonna make a joke about Cumberbatch too. Like, oh, it's Doctor Strange in this movie. No. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I think this is one of the multiverses. Um, yeah. yeah. In, in, multi- in, in this multiverse, uh, Doctor Strange is played by John Amos. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> yes. He is Doctor Strange, the Sorcerer Supreme yes. in, this, uh, this, in this universe. And that's why he's so mad at his son. He's like, I taught you everything you, you know. <laughs> and that you've, you've used your power to do evil. With yes. the, uh... <clears throat> anyway, yes. sorry. So, Don't mean to go off on. Yeah. So anyway, so um, I, I liked the show. I, I remember liking it when it came out, too, because but then again, I was a big fan of All in the Family. So it was kind of a mm-hmm. kind of a revert back there. Plus, at the time, I think I was conservative. So um, <laughs> yeah, that probably helped because I was I don't know. I, I wasn't real conservative in high school, but prior to that, like grade school, I grew up in a Reagan household. So, you know, I was kind of. <laughs> I used yeah. to have a, I used to have a picture of Reagan hanging in my bedroom. Oh my god! Ew. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was one of those type of things, you know. I mean, my dad's conservative, so it was kind of like I, you know, the house you grow up in, sort of thing, is what influences you. Same reason I like Michigan football. Um, yeah. The... <laughs> Until you went to a Catholic high school, which is inherently yeah. conservative as well. So yeah, and but but even when I was in high school, though, I started to. That's when I started to get more liberal. When, oh, okay. when I got involved in more uh, creative things like theater and well, art, of course, art theater, and stuff yeah. like that, yeah, I became more, you know, when you start to have friends who are gay and things of that nature, you start to get more open-minded about the world and start yeah. to care about things more. Not not saying that you have to have a gay friend to be more open-minded, but right. it helps. Um, yeah, it helps, yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, when you have uh, yeah, I liked friends. it. I thought it was a good show. I I, I kind of wish it would have been lasted more than a season. But like you said, if it didn't get canceled, then she wouldn't have gone on to news radio. So yeah, but then we'd live in an alternate <laughs> universe um, where somebody else played that character. Oh, um, yeah, true. But uh, the um, the premise of the show was was pretty good. I mean, overall, in this episode, the way I, I liked it. Speaking of like theater and stuff, it played like a like a one act play. Yeah, you know, a little bit. Like, like everything takes place in basically one or two rooms here, and if, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, it, not not a lot of you know, I mean, a lot of like you know, sit, good sitcoms in my opinion take place in one location, and you have a lot of you know. It, sometimes you need to venture out, but I think a lot of them like where you got your, you know, all, like All in the Family is like is probably the best example of that because most of the episodes all took place in that living room, you know. And for this to, of course, with the show being named after the location, 704 Hauser, <laughs> if you venture outside of that location, maybe you're not really living up to the title. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, but it's like Cheers taking place in Cheers or, um, I don't know, like, or, or like, I'm trying to think of like other good sitcoms where it's like one location and it feels really good. Like an, like an old British one act play or something that yeah. you got a lot of stuff going on all at once. And it's all kind of like a British farce sort of thing. And that's what this felt like to me because you got kind of the, the, the tempo of it, you know, that's why I liked it. Um, yeah. But anyways, uh, plot wise, what goes on here in this episode? Uh, <clears throat> uh, so good. Um, or Goody, uh, he's he's hanging out with this girlfriend, uh, Sherilyn. I forgot her name and yeah, her Sher- Sherilyn. Sherilyn, uh, she she makes like a like a Virgin Mary drink for him, um, like a like a Bloody Mary, like but it's not you know alcohol. Yeah, without yeah, and then um, 
and they're kind of like kissing and stuff and then he stops he's like no we can't you know i can't do stuff or whatever because you know saving myself for marriage and whatever and then she kind of wants to get married you know but he doesn't really want to because he's afraid that his parents won't approve because she's white slash jewish which even then it's a weird thing it's like are jews really white because the nazis certainly don't think so so it's like you know but anyway it's a whole other uh, yeah but i'm, I'm whole pretty whole sure argument, but... Af- an african-american like ernie cumberbatch does you know so yeah like johnny Ness's character yeah so like he's kind of worried about you know his parents like you know disapproving of you know that which is interesting because so we got like we kind of got like already we kind of have like some contradictory stuff going on where he's a black conservative who has no problem with being with a white woman but his parents are liberals but they have a problem with him being with the white woman so it's like that kind yeah, well of, i mean it, it really does right. kind of show you the nature of the world at that time where yeah. you know and also the nature of the fact that people aren't really black and white not not racially but you know what i mean like people don't people have yeah. layers to them where you know yeah sometimes I'm, I'm not trying to defend anybody that does stupid shit like clarence thomas but um <laughs> Some people <laughs> who is also married to a white woman. Um, yeah. But uh, the uh, sometimes people have views on one thing that you think is kind of liberal, but they are really conservative yeah. people. You know, it's just the way it is. And unfortunately, it's because they're not politically educated. And they don't understand. But yeah. Yeah. Because uh, every, every issue is tied to another issue. That's just the fact of life. Exactly. And so it makes no logical sense to be like, oh, well. I'm super right wing on this issue, but super left wing on this issue. Well, you just cancel each other out. But yeah, but I understand most people don't understand the reality of their political world. So that that's we end up with people who just contradict themselves. That's just and, p- and people who are really strong on one issue and nothing else. Yeah, like, so like that's just the um, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, sorry, <laughs> but but what I thought that was interesting though is that he's like Mister Conservative, and he's like, yeah, but I got this white girlfriend, and then they're like, parents are like oh, we don't like our son being conservative, but we also don't want to date the white woman. It's like, okay. And, then, uh, and so, like, that's part of the, the, that's kind of part of the tension. Yeah, well, uh, it, it is also, they're, they're like 60s era black people who were yeah. possibly, you know, members of the Black Panthers, not saying they were, but you know what I mean, or, or had friends who were and are kind right. of more of, or, or maybe they had friends who were, you know, nation of islam or you know other things that influence them in certain ways or they're just really proud of their heritage right and you know not saying they're right or wrong i'm just saying that's what they are yeah i mean it's fine to be proud of your heritage but yeah this, this idea that like your your heritage is going to be diluted by oh, yeah. someone else coming in i mean that's the same that's like what the white nationalists are saying it's exactly like, we're losing our mm-hmm. you know it's like how are you losing your whiteness by other people living by you like that doesn't make any sense like is your skin magically changing color like, and, you know, like, a, like another you know. thing I, I i wish we were able to have but we didn't have time really before we recorded this episode like maybe have mm-hmm. a black perspective on this show um mm-hmm. if anybody out there wants to give their perspective feel free to message me mike at cullenpark.com i mean i would love to hear and maybe talk about in a future episode about this or other shows that have a political bent from out history you know i just want to get different views and anybody not necessarily just black people but you know anybody well anyone except for like white nationalists and nazis but um you know oh you know yeah, i can they, I'll, they I'll, 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 do... I'll, I'll, I'll i'll take your messages and send them to mike at cullenpark.com and then i will forward them on to the fbi yeah yeah so yeah please please send us stuff and then <laughs> no uh, well maybe anyway uh, but yes yeah, so we got that going on um they you know because their parents are going to be coming home from church um you know wife comes in she slams the door you know in front of her husband she's obviously pissed at him about something um close the closes the um the coat closet door right before he could put his coat in there so it's because apparently he was arguing at church i guess with the pastor or something because he doesn't like doesn't like what he's teaching at church or something like that yeah so it's it's really pissed off i agree with him too but anyways (laughs) yeah because he was basically just like you know 
asking, for, you know, basically, you know, basically your, your typical like grifter preacher wants you to basically pretty much hand up all of your money to him and leave you poor, you know, stuff yeah. like that. But she's like all all for that, and he's like, well, <laughs> he's contradicting himself. He's saying that you know almost all of us are unemployed or about to be unemployed, but yet he wants us to give us all this our money. Like what? <laughs> like, yeah. You know, like, so he's kind of got that practical, like actual reality based kind of worldview, and she's I mean, got the it's more, it's like, it's metaphorical. It, it's interesting and sad that a lot of the things in this episode still apply today. I know. I know. Yeah. It, especially when it comes to, you know, religious, especially churches, you know, like charismatic or, you know, fundamentalist or, you know, any, any, any kind of, you know, church or temple that kind of, um, you know, bent, I guess is the word that tends to, uh, tends to really ask a, a lot, you know, yeah. especially find from its its members or even non-members i mean sometimes like even if you just a visitor they'll still ask you to chip in it's like what's my first time here are you talking about <laughs> but, uh, exactly so um yeah we got yeah we got that going on uh, what else happens i'm kind of um forgetting a few things here so so basically they're they're arguing about that um <clears throat> Sherilyn is kind of enjoying it because she doesn't see this type of thing in her household um Mm -hmm. is what i'm gathering um she's you know they bring up a few things here and there about her uh you know her going to temple and all this other stuff and she brings up the fact that her temple teaches people to be you know tolerant and things of that nature so it's kind of you know interesting you you get these like this argument because the whole day is predicated on the fact that uh Goody is going to be on Face the Nation. So, <clears throat> which is like a big, uh, you know, show on CBS Sunday mornings. So yeah. he, he's going to be on there. So they're uh, they're all, you know, wanting to watch him on there. Uh, there's a knock at the door at one point where while the family's all arguing. <laughs> um, <laughs> at, at one point, uh, the mother Rose takes uh, Sherilyn into the... Sherilyn goes into the uh, kitchen to help her with food because to let the dudes argue out, you know, what they're talking about and everything. And (laughs) you get your uh, your little arguments there. Um, It's interesting. I don't know when I mean, because I don't know. I can't remember the the uh, specific times of all these arguments because it just kind of continued throughout the episode. Yeah, (laughs) the um, but it's interesting how. It's later on, I think, actually, though, when um, we do have a visit from Joey Stivick at the door. <laughs> we get a knock at the door, and we get uh, we get Joey come in, and he wants to check out the house because it's where he was born. Last time we saw him, he was like a little kid, I think, in the TV show Gloria, which maybe we'll cover for the podcast in the future because that show lasted like one season, too. Um, <laughs> the, you know, failed spinoffs of all in the family can be a theme that we do sometimes, you know, so, but the, uh, the, um, the, the basic thing, he comes in, he wants to see his old house, you know, um, like you do. I don't yeah. know, because nice. I mean, my dad lived in the house I grew up in until like a few months ago. So I'm like, so I had the ability to visit whenever I wanted. Yeah. I still can go visit it now because, people that bought it were friends of my family. So the, the, um, I'm not going to visit it though. Um, <laughs> that place is hell. It's haunted. Wow. By memories. No. <laughs> and a ghost. But, uh, so, so, so Joey comes to visit and, uh, he's in the middle of the argument. He's, he's like in the middle of the argument, but so they, uh, basically, Rose tells him, hey, Joey, go ahead. You know where the kitchen is. Go in there and, uh, you know, make yourself a sandwich and get some lemonade or whatever. Um, so, so he does. And um, then we have a situation where uh, they keep arguing and then Joey decides to leave or they, they tell him to leave because they're getting really heated in their argument. And it's more of a family thing, so let's do that. Um, 
so he yeah. yeah um what happens then i mean what what are they arguing about there um pretty much it's the same thing like you know mr conservative you know 23 year old who thinks he's got life all figured out because he's young and he's arrogant just like every young person who thinks that they figured out life by the time they're like 18 anyway um he's like oh well you know, black people are responsible for their own plight and blah, you know, that typical, you know, black conservative line, which is again, just a big yeah. Solution. But again, I'm a white guy saying this, so therefore it can't be true. It's like, no, things are true regardless of who says them. But anyway, I'm not going to get into that too much. I'm just tired of like, there's like this, I've noticed this trend for actually a few years now among like liberals and the left where it's like, only a black person can criticize a black person. You're only a Jewish people. It's like, no, it's like things are true whether like I mean, I mean, yes, there's it is good to have like a perspective for someone of that group, but it's like if, if I go outside and say the sky is blue and it's blue, like it it's like someone else like, well no, it can't be blue because a white guy said it. It's like it's it's true. No. Like anyway, sorry, I just it's it's a it's a pet peeve of mine. I've noticed that that's the yeah. trend I've seen lately and it's like I Anyway, sorry. I think it's just everything that's been going on since Friday. I'm I'm just getting triggered by a lot of like conservative mentalities. It's, yeah, it's, as we record this, it's I, just I, a couple days after Roe v. Wade got turned, yeah. uh, got got uh, turned over or whatatever. So yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Over, overturned, saying, I, not turned over, overturned, overturned. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just saying, I I hate conservatives and I hate conservatism. So like, it's it's triggering me right now. <laughs> but anyway, so like, um, he's basically saying, oh yeah, you know black people did this to ourselves we're the blame blah 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 even though there's like eight thousand years of persecution you know by white people that have led up to this but somehow we're to blame for all this which is like literally like the response of like a traumatized person who's just blaming shit on themselves so like you should probably be going to therapy as opposed to being a conservative politician but anyway no matter uh and his dad's like no like you're completely full of shit like you yeah know, like like i actually grew up under this oppression that you just think about or whatever like this is yeah it's like it's like you real. Know, who's paying for your college you know he, said, <laughs> he made yeah he pulled the who's yeah. paying your tuition card you know like all right well yeah you know you want to learn all this stuff about how you know terrible black people are and how you know, we're so irresponsible with our money, whatever. Well, I'm paying you to learn this nonsense to then tell me, you know. So again, that's another kind of I think little dig at conservatives right there too. It's like you're being paid to learn about how evil liberals are by a liberal. Like, you know, like <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's interesting. Anyway, um, But yeah, they, they they have the argument, um jo- Joey comes back, you know, like 10 minutes later after walking the neighborhood um and he uh they 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 still keep arguing of course the whole time Mm -hmm. it was funny when when joey first showed up he did they were arguing he says yeah this is the right house yeah that was was a really good line yeah (laughs) he's like yeah this is the house yeah (laughs) the um um i i think he was only in one episode joey but i think the show should have left him in as a character yeah, and it, he kind of had like the weird like spaz kind of. Yeah, he, he was like the spaz dude in the show, yeah. like kind, kind of like all, a, kind of a screechish sort of thing, but not, yeah, you know, not like really. Just the way you know, that all weird, and, yeah. yeah. Or the or or if we want to go with family ties, like Skippy who lived next door to them, sort of thing. Um, but uh, the yeah, uh, a little bit. yeah <clears throat> um, who was played by Mark Price, one of my Facebook friends. Shout out Mark if you're listening. Um, anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> the um the the show um the, the it goes from there where uh we do hear um an interesting thing that I just want to bring up talks about you know Clarence Thomas being an Uncle Tom and him being you know and, and how he can't be in in and saying no oh, my dad can't be proud of the one black man on the Supreme Court right the one thing I want to point out right now. He's still the only fucking black man on the Supreme Court almost 30 years later. Exactly, which that makes this show so much even more dated where it's like, oh, look how much progress we've made, Dad. You're, you're such an idiot for not agreeing with me. It's like, yeah, who, who really came out on top here <laughs> in the argument? And, 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 and like, ju- just in general, the fact that he and probably some of the other people who are on the Supreme Court were on the Supreme Court when this show aired. 
Well, I think he, yeah, he had been confirmed, I think, a couple of years earlier. Yeah. Or like that. But <laughs> again, see, that's another thing that I've, this trend I've noticed that mm-hmm. this is like, this is more of like a, a mainstream Democrat trend. It's like, well, of course, at this point, the Democrats have nothing to do with this, but it's this idea, oh, as long as we get a black person on this or a trans person or a lesbian or whatever, like, it's all good. It's like, no, tell me what their policies are. Tell me what they yeah. actually think. That's what and, I care about. Yes, it's cool to have, yeah. you know, representation. Awesome. Like, I, I'm not saying that's bad. That's great. But, like, if, like, a transgender person is running on, like, a fascist platform, I'm like, uh, I'm not going to vote for the trans person because they're calling for fascism. But, like, you know? <laughs> but you know how you get different ideas in this country? Um, okay. Sorry, going off on a little thing here. Um, there's this thing that they have with the presidency. It's called term limits. Yeah. Um, yeah, life appointments are ridiculous. Yeah, um, lifetime appointments or people that can just be re- reelected until they are fucking wheeled into the fucking chambers over, you know, like Strom Thurmond or something, you know. I'm just saying that... Diane Feinstein, she's like 90. And, yeah, it's like yeah. there should be term limits for Congress and for the Supreme Court. There's no reason. It's like, it's, it's just as bad as with the Pope. Um, but anyways, that's, <laughs> yeah. That's, it's, yeah, we're talking politically, but this show actually did talk th- about th- this, this, but, this really makes sense here, but, it does, but, but, yeah. but, but it, it just really puts a, a, shines a light on it. When I hear the word Clarence Thomas in a show from 1994, I know, man, it's fucking wild. <laughs> And he would call him Uncle Clarence, which is what Samuel L. Jackson just did recently. Yeah, that's why. And I just watched it just right now, like before we re- yeah. recorded it. So I, I'm like, oh my god, it's literally the second time in like the past two days where. See, no I watched action. it. I watched it Thursday before the. Oh jeez. Before the the ruling, and then I watched it again just now. So wow. <laughs> it was like weird. Yeah, because I saw the article or whatever it was last night. Some of my mom actually sent sent it to me, like to like a link or whatever. And then I read the article, and then and then I watched this like I don't know, like eighteen hours later. Or something. Yeah, it's I'm funny. Like, oh my god, this is weird. I'm like it's a, hearing it's a, it's, 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 a beta, it, like, it's it's an interesting Bader Meinhof uh, phenomenon where you don't hear something or see something, and then all of a sudden it's everywhere. Yeah. It's just wild. Um, plus even got, even in a sitcom from 1994, that's just weird. Exactly. Plus two, it wasn't it wasn't the sense of like you you heard that and like your subconscious picked it up and you suggested the mm. show. No, you suggested the show last week, like yeah. last Saturday. So I like, guess it's, it's like a week before even the whole ruling even took place. So yeah, and it had like, nothing to do with that when I suggested this because I forgot about yeah. all the Clarence Thomas shit. I hadn't seen it since 1994, and I just remembered its existence and then i came across it on youtube and i'm like hey let's watch this so it's yeah. just weird <laughs> it is, it's just yeah one of those things where it's just like wild coincidence or, or fate or whatever you call it uh but anyway yeah sorry i didn't mean to get sidetracked oh, no, but, yeah, fine. He, yeah he, he, but he does bring that up um they have this it, it's it's a really funny scene where you've got um them arguing with each other and joey's stuck in the middle just like trying to eat well they're all trying to convince joey of their point of view which is hilarious yeah. and, and, like, and he's doing this thing where he's looking at somebody he's like yeah, oh, yeah that might be a good point oh it might be he's just, he's just trying to eat <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> i don't think no, he really no, gives hilarious. a shit i think he's just trying to eat <laughs> yeah i know like like goodies like literally like walks up to them and he starts they're like the you know his dad's like like oh well what you gotta realize is you know it's like yeah. <laughs> which I, I don't know that was just like a nice little i don't know It'd be interesting to see them like kind of redo this show today. Um, it would not just necessarily... be the same. That's the that's the sad part. Of the yeah, show would be exactly. exactly. The same. It, it'd be interesting, and I'd like to see them keep like a Joey type character. Like maybe maybe change the whole thing. It doesn't have to be related to all in the family, but you know, yeah, something like this would. I mean, I there's there's probably things. I mean, you've had like Blackish and other things that have had commentary on Black America and stuff recently. Oh yeah, you know, definitely. So, yeah, that have done it a lot better so yeah, um much, yeah, much more nuance and yeah. stuff like that and probably a, a bigger budget though to be fair as well oh, yeah um, where they could go outside the home and have yeah, scenes well, like school and plus, plus it 
most TV shows nowadays have a bigger budget than this probably had. Yeah. Um, probably most of your mo- show, most of your money probably went to pay John Amos at this time. So. Oh <laughs> yeah, I'm sure of it. Yeah. And then, um, I mean, plus that that show has like a million spinoffs because they got Mixed Dish, and then they've got yeah, um, they got the one where the daughter's in college. I'm not sure if that's even still on or not. Yeah, but, Grownish um, and stuff. Yeah, but Grown- but they're, but they're, they're none of them. I mean, Grownish is still on. The rest of them are off i mean mixed oh, okay. dish went yeah off. i don't think yeah, yeah but but um you know but obviously like all in the family had a million spinoffs too um yeah, yeah it. but um so we have the the episode keeps going and we've got um them arguing and everything but then um goody's uh appearance on the face of the nation um is on so then they show him and he he does this thing where they they ask him how what he you know what his parents think of his you know being an african-american conservative and he talks about how great his dad was and all this other stuff and then his dad's all smiling but then at the end he talks about how he's he's uh so bleeding heart that he needs to take an iv into the uh voting booth right yeah yeah so he's kind of like you know <laughs> it's kind of like oh he loves me and then oh shit he's still a fucking conservative you know so yeah. <laughs> it's like <laughs> ungrateful brat yeah yeah and uh he puts on some headphones and then uh yeah and, and then we've got this thing where everybody is arguing and then joey just kind of sneaks out and then the episode ends so yeah that's it that's, yeah literally yeah <laughs> not a whole lot happened which is what not these really. type of shows have but a lot was said more than what happened so yeah um, it was more of like and, a, and I, th- like... I think that might have been one of its downfalls though at the time it was kind of preachy at a point you know what i mean like yeah yeah so that might have been the problem like where people at that point were you know watching friends and shit and didn't really want to be preached to you know so don't preach to me don't don't give yeah. me knowledge uh yeah you know you just want to watch i want to I you wanna just wanna watch, watch friends or frazier or something and yeah i want to watch a show about you know a group of people in new york city where there's no black people live in it somehow yeah and then you know yeah <laughs> yeah that makes more sense <laughs> there there was like four black people in the history of the show anyway so um the uh, not really but the entire city of new york yeah uh, <laughs> um anyways do you want to take a quick break here and then we'll talk about some reviews here or something after the break sure okay we'll be right back no outlet live hey i'm jay remy host of no outlet live if you're in a podcast that explore any and everything, check us out. We stream anywhere you listen or watch podcasts, or just type No Outlet Live, one word, in your Google search bar to find the show. Live Saturdays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook. No Outlet Live, your road to boredom ends here. Do you like Tessa? Do you think this will be a date that can last? Well, uh, she's not very articulate. And we are back. Okay, do you want to hear some reviews culled from the depths of the Internet Movie Database? Yeah. Okay. There's really not that many. There's only five reviews, so. Okay. All right. This one is from D. Butcher back in December of 2001. So it was written quite a while ago. It says, acting is good, premise is forced. The cast is very is a very good cast with some decent performances by the always dependable John Amos and a then unknown Moira Turney who has been good in shows like News Radio. The problem is that the show is somewhat superficial in the creation of its characters. The exploration of a multi ethnic multiracial family may seem revolutionary, but each character is a cliche. Archie and Meathead were cliches of the kinko lefty and bigot Nixon supporter, the silent majority, question mark. But they were cliches with depth. The depth within the cliches expanded their character. This In this return to the same house, Norman Lear seemed content to revisit the setting by creating characters that were supposed to spark the same fireworks, but lacked the depth to make you care. The only true positive thing to come out of the show is its failure. Lear seems content that a black man sitting in Archie's chair should be shocking, 
he was never sitting in his chair. He, the chair wasn't there. But <laughs> the but the great thing about how far this country has come since 1971 is that a black man sitting in Archie's chair is not shocking. Whatever success Lear had in breaking down societal societal walls are primarily the reason for the show's failure. God bless America. Mm. Okay. Okay. You know what's uh, really sad? <laughs> what? That that it hurts me when I hear the words God bless America. I hate it. It, I, it shouldn't. I I hate anyone. I well, for one thing, I hate it when people use God and America in the same sentence. Yeah. In a positive way. I hate American flags. Um, like if I see an American flag, I'm like almost 80% certain that that person's a bigot at this point and that's sad but that's that's just yeah. where i'm at like i'm like i don't trust like if like if like i needed like help and like i need to go to a house and i saw america flag i'd be like i don't know about these people like I'm, i might have to take a chance but i don't know <laughs> if, if i'm in a neighborhood where everybody else has got a confederate flag and one person has an american flag that's the only time i'm going to that house well yeah <laughs> if, <it's an> <laughs> like, if there's no like if there's no flag or flag i'm going yeah. to the house and this is how I feel because because yeah. people and their flags like again flags are inherently conservative because it's all about nationalism yeah and so it just it just it just kind of goes it's just it's just really bothersome though. that I I believe in God I believe in America mm. but the words God bless America make me think of somebody that's a bigot yeah well it's because. Most of the people who say that are like that. Yeah. So it's, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, it's, it's bad to stereotype people, but then at the same time, it's like, well, you know, I mean, I guess, you know, that's wrong because, you know, if you apply that to like black people or any other group, you'd be making it. Yeah. And I mean, it, it, it is probably like, a stereotype, but the thing is, it's, it's kind of like how some symbols in history have meant one thing at one point. Mm hmm. And now they mean something different, and that's what's kind of happening with the American flag and God Bless America. Yeah. Like, at this point, yeah. like, when someone says God Bless America or has America flag, I almost just immediately envision, like, a Nazi flag. Like, I'm, I'm not even being hard hyper, but, like, no, like I know. literally um, how I feel. Just be, and not, not just that, there's a black American flag that, like, um, is even worse. And there's a guy in my neighborhood, well, not really, he's, he's like, a couple streets few streets down but he, yeah he's close um and he's got a um a black american flag and that's actually really really scary because that has history behind it and it, it comes from the confederacy and what that meant was um that the confederate army basically had like orders at that point to take no prisoners and to do no no quarter yeah. So, like, they would just kill anyone in their way. It didn't matter if they were, like... Because, like, the rules of warfare state, like, you know, if, if someone's not fighting you, like, you're not supposed to kill them. Like, you're supposed to just take them prisoner or whatever. So, like, even if someone surrendered, that, that Black Ameri America flag basically says, just shoot them, just kill them. So this guy has this flag hanging from his house, which obviously he's just projecting out to his neighbors, like, I'm going to kill you if I get the call from Trump or whoever crazy oh, right wingers yeah. can come that. But so, like. And, and, and the thing scary. is, it's like, it's yeah, like sometimes I, it's ignorance and they don't know what they're doing, but a lot of times it's not. And that's what's sad. No, anyone who's where anyone who's doing a black American flag knows exactly where it comes from. Because uh, there's no, like, it's not a random thing that you would just pick out of, like, a store. Like, yeah. it's, it's something that you would know exactly what. So like I see, I saw that flag, and I'm like, I'm like, I gotta watch out for that guy because he might be coming after us one of these days. Like, you know, once he gets the the order from Trump or you know whoever, like time to go kill liberals, you know, or whatever. Like, cause again, yeah. I, I don't trust these people. I'm sorry. Again, I I don't mean to offend people, but the last two days have been really really rough for me for obvious yeah. reasons. And it's not just about abortion rights it's gonna it's gonna lead to everything it's gonna else. lead even to other then, things if, even if, if, if it was we just abortion, yeah yeah and even if it was just for abortion rights that's the other argument i've been seeing yeah. now from people where it's like well what do you have to worry about it's like it's a little thing called empathy like yeah even exactly. if something doesn't affect me i could still feel bad about mm -hmm. affecting other people you know <laughs> you know it's like you know my 
it, it's like your brother having chicken chicken pox and you don't you know are you gonna not feel sad for him because you don't have them like, you know it's just you, like i don't have chicken pox what do you feel bad about bro yeah. it's like but then that's another problem <laughs> there's such a lack of empathy in this country among at least half the population who just don't care about anyone but themselves like they just so selfish and self-centered and uh that's just that's just who they are it's just that's either part i mean you could you can argue nature versus nurture who knows how they got to that point does it really kind of irrelevant if i mean you know if a dog with rabies comes up to you and is about to bite you are you going to really care oh how does poor dog get the rabies and like, oh you're going to care about running away you're not getting bit you know <laughs> like, but i don't know that's kind of how, how i look at it um which i know i might offend some people and i apologize yeah. that they don't so do you want to hear some here, more reviews? <laughs> they don't come here to listen to my political commentary, which, you know, yeah. it's probably the reason why our show doesn't get anywhere. It's because they're no. we're, we're reviewing TV shows, and i got to go in and inject no, I, I think the reason that we're, we're not is uh, because uh, there's like a million podcasts out there. And unless you're Joe Rogan, you're not going to get all the listens. Um <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> a good point. Yeah, you can go back to some reviews, it's fine. Yeah, so um, here we go. Hold on one second. So here's another uh, review here. Um, this one's a 2 out of 10 star from Jazzify um, on December 1st of 2015. 704 Hauser was born during the rise of the 90s conservative era. And while left-wing activist producer Norman Lear sought to perhaps sway some ratings by offering a very rare but somewhat honest glimpse of a conservative character on TV, Lear's liberal leanings overrode his ability to give a sincere portrayal of such, and the show went down in flames after a mere handful of episodes. Unlike All in the Family, where the blue-collar union... um, (laughs) <laughs> Republican was always wrong and portrayed as an ignorant, bigoted veteran fighting against um, the social changes taking place around him, while such arbiters of such change were always correct and commonsensical. Uh, 704 is a com- the complete opposite with the head of the household as the hero who is correct in his beliefs that things haven't improved while his conservative Republican son is now the one out of touch. Some things will never change in Hollywood, which is the goal <laughs> and life, which is its goal in lifelong ambition. They, they did make oh, a yeah. typo here too. They said union, um, the blue collar yeah. union. They said, they said Democrat, but Archie was not a Democrat. No, so, he was Repu- yeah. conservative. Mm-hmm. And by the way, okay. Mr. Moron here, who's commenting, whatever his name yeah. is. Uh, uh, conservatives are inherently anti-union, so that's like, mm-hmm. like well, well, Ar- Archie, weekend. Archie was in a union, but still. <laughs> so then, I mean, it's just a contradictory yeah. again, like what I was saying before. Well, it's well, like, and and and, and actually, have been... uh, conservatives haven't always been anti-union. It was just kind uh, of like a it it grew, it grew slow, very fast, but not you know. So, <laughs> but, majority um, of the time, because yeah. they view unions as being mm-hmm. communist. There's a whole history oh, yeah. of of anarchists and communists, you know, using unions to build up the worker because that's such a terrible thing, right? Because oh, yeah. in order to be a conservative, you have to hate yourself and hate workers. Oh yeah, for something. Because, again, because, you know, you imagine yourself that you're going to be the millionaire one day. You're going to be the business owner. So when that happens, you don't want to have to pay taxes. And, of course, you're you're most likely always going to remain on the factory floor until you die. But whatever, you know, dream big, I guess, and just dream because that's all it's ever going to be is a dream. But anyway, you know, so like, um, yeah, like, oh, yeah, Mr. Hollywood. Okay, well, um, your people have had ambitions for the past 50 years and you got what you wanted uh i think that's a much more detrimental fact to society than whatever agenda hollywood supposedly by the way uh, do you know that hollywood actually has an actual contract with the american military to make certain movies that bump up about how great the american military is Uh i'm not sure i would call that liberal but anyway, no matter. Facts don't matter to the conservatives. We, we, know, we know that. So, okay. Yeah, um, I mean, not, to, not to mention the biggest movie of the year is uh, Top Gun Maverick. Which yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's, Hollywood's all about liberal propaganda. Okay, if you if you say military propaganda is liberal propaganda, then I guess, I guess so. 
but that goes against everything you're saying, but okay, like literally every single movie that comes out that's about like the army or military, almost like 99.99999% of them are about like how great the military is, how great warfare is, how Americans are always the good guys. You might get one or yeah, two movies. Yeah, I mean, movies. well, it, it, it has to do with the fact that uh, they, they probably have to portray it that way because they want to, oh, yeah. uh, they, they, they want to use the, you know, bases or other things for their movies. And yeah. it, it's, it's, it's just like, you know, you can't have somebody, you know, drinking a Sprite in your movie and be a villain and expect Sprite to sponsor your TV show or movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's unless they give you express permission to do that. But, yeah. but like, but yeah, I'm just saying, <laughs> though, like, if, you know, if Hollywood is such, you know, this bastion of, of liberal elites who are pushing, you know, social justice warriors or whatever. Okay. But then how do you explain all this shit? Then like, you know, of course they'll have no explanation for that. No, because you know? there is none. Uh, you know, because there is none, because it's because again, just like any any industry, you know, it's it's like it's about making money. It doesn't really care about political. Like most most businesses, at a certain point, like they'll just do business with anyone. They don't care who it is. Like they're they're in the business of making money, not losing money because they got a political exactly. cause. It's, I mean, it's, yeah, it's called capitalism. That, but... It's 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 the it's the business of the show business. So yeah, yeah, exactly. It's the business of the. I mean, like you even had like people back in the day, like when the Soviet Union first came into existence, there was conservative businessmen who did not like the government telling them like you can't do business with the communists. They're like, fuck, we can't. Like if they want to trade with us, we're gonna trade with them. Like, like you know, like, exactly. So yeah, but anyway. Um, so, Sorry again. So, last few days have been really triggered yeah, by all this. So, so one more review here before we wrap things up. Um, this one is from Bunny with a Brain. Um, in uh, August fifteenth of two thousand five, um, it was all about John Amos. The ridiculous thing about this show was that John Amos, newly popularized by his daddy role in Coming to America played the father. The show was based on the sketchy premise that a black, politically conscious family moves into the bunker's old house. That's quite believable. But then, what are the odds that a man who looks and acts exactly like James, Eb- James, James Evans from Good Times, a spinoff of Maud, which was a spinoff of All in the Family itself, would exist in the same world that we were supposed to believe to be the same one from the 70s. I think the producers of this one thought we were dumb. Like, we wouldn't expect J.J. to come walking in the front door at any moment? Okay. Um, no, they, 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 they just realized that, you know, you call the character something different and he can still be played by the same actor. <laughs> It's something that's been done since the beginning of history. Um, I mean, literally, Jeremy Sisto played a lawyer in the season finale of an episode of Law and Order, and then the next season he played a cop the next episode. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. So, you know, oh and, and Jerry Orbach played a lawyer before he became a cop on Law and Order. Law and Order did this for years, and Law and Order was on at this fucking time. So I'm just saying. <laughs> I've, I've seen movies like this too, like like, like the um, the Turbulence uh, movie series. Oh, yeah, like where they, they have like, different, they have the same actor play different roles. They had, yeah, the, the guy in part two, he was like, um, <clears throat> he was on the plane, and then he had, I don't know, I, yeah. I don't, know, don't know exactly his role, but then in the third movie, he was playing uh, like a computer hacker or something like that, and um, yeah, I mean, and at first I thought he was like the same character because, like, in the second movie, he also had something to do with computers. So I just thought like he like turned into a hacker. But no, and, and, and th- 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 then even even something the opposite of what happened here, um, where where John Amos is playing two characters in the same universe, really. Um, yeah, we this was decades after the fact that. Darren from Bewitched was replaced. Or this was on around the same time as Roseanne replacing Becky. <clears throat> with a different actress. That's right, they replaced her with yeah. um you know, Sarah Chalk. Uh, but but what what, 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 what yeah. yeah, but 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 what I'm saying is 
there's this thing called suspension of disbelief. You got to realize that people. I know. I mean, you're watching a TV show, dude. Like, yeah. like, oh, how are we not supposed to expect this? I'm like, okay, yeah. dude, like, calm down. I mean, like, do you realize that John Amos actually is an actor? Like, yeah, he's not actually like the character on yeah. TV. Like, you're not watching a real family. I mean, you obviously realize he is because you bring up the fact that he was in Coming to America in your. Yeah, so wait, so is his character also from Coming to America? <laughs> was that James Evans too? Or what? You know, I'm just like, you know, well, well anyways. Um... <laughs> right off the heels. I'm like, that was 10 years before. I know. <laughs> saying right off the heels. Of... <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I have to say one thing though, really quick. It's yeah, not really related to this, but like, is it just me or did like, and like, mm-hmm. It's not. It's not just the sense of getting older, but like, did it seem like back in the day that like, ten years felt like more like ten years? That like, I mean, oh yeah, like, not so much. Not so much. I know, like, when you get older, time goes. I'm not. I don't. I'm not talking in that sense. I mean, like, like cultural changes. Like, it seems like now things drag on for much, much longer. Well, it's like, it's like, I mean, obviously you have better technology than you did 10 years ago, but mm-hmm. not much has culturally changed from 2012 to 2020 as much as from like 1982 to 1992. See, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. It, it just, I was wondering if I'm just, mm-hmm. if that's just like a something I've felt or, or if anyone yeah. else has felt the same way. Cause it just does seem like we're going into like, the anti Renaissance. I mean, almost, I, I, right? I literally have the probably the same style of clothing that I had in in twenty twelve. I haven't changed yeah. my clothing style, and no one said shit to me. So <laughs> it's not like, like I don't think anyone it, else has either. No, no that's what I'm saying. It's, it's it's nobody's like it's like, hey man, you're wearing those old clothes that look look stupid. You know, it, it's not like when you know if if in nineteen ninety two you were wearing like you know day glow pants or something. You know what I mean? Um, from 1982 or whatever. I don't know. I'm probably off on my dates, but you know what I mean. No, I hear you saying, but it's just like, yeah. even like with music and stuff, like, so yeah. for example, like, let's say, you know, the changes that went on in music from 1982 to 2002, so that's 20 years. Like, I mean, music changed so drastically during that 20 years, but like, honestly, as I'm thinking about it, I don't think music has really changed all that much since 2002 to now. I mean, technology's gotten better, obviously, yeah, I but think, like, as I far think, as a style, not really a whole lot. Like, I honestly think that a lot of it has to do with the nostalgia factor that we have in, in society in general. Mm. Where everybody's living in nostalgia, where you're like, oh, I really, you know, it's like Star Wars is back again, you know, and, and, yeah. uh, and you know, Indiana Jones is coming back, you know, and stuff like that. So it, it makes it so time kind of collapses on itself where, you know something that was cool in 1983 is again cool now and um but you also have the the internet where there are kids out there watching stuff that was made decades before they were born whereas when we were kids we could watch stuff like that on nick at night but not that often it wasn't like and 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 it wasn't and, and kids nowadays are like you know obsessed with like friends or something like that whereas uh when i was a kid i wasn't wearing a donna reed t-shirt (laughs) <laughs> right you know or, uh, so, or yeah Dennis totally. the I, t-shirt I just, or something you know so yeah it's uh and plus to the whole nostalgia yeah. thing i mean that in of itself is just like a almost like a national depression where it's like people just long for an imagined better time because everything sucks so bad now you know <laughs> like well, well i mean the original but, you know nostalgia like um the meaning of it is um it was, it was something like um I'm gonna look it up really quick um yeah it means like i know what you're talking yeah, about it's re- return it, the, the, oh, in greek it's like it's like pain and uh returning home to pain and stuff like that is yeah know, it's it's so, so a lot of it has to do with pain but we've repurposed the word to mean kind of like it, it's it's more like now it's like i think it's dealing with the current pain by masking it with past uh, joy, you know. I mean, but, yes, yeah, it's yes, what it is. It's like a cope, it's like a coping mechanism. Yeah, where, it's like... where it kind of makes sense to me, but I still hate it when people say, "Oh, that new version of this ruined my childhood." 
it yeah i i it didn't yeah, really I, ruin your childhood but i kind of get the idea behind what they're saying but i still think it's the stupidest statement you can possibly make it is because like the original version's still there bro like, i mean 704 hauser if you didn't like it didn't ruin all in the family all in the family still existed <laughs> you know to keep on top well of, they you know? say it's like <laughs> yeah well since the canon they've now they've changed the story so officially it's canon now and i can't accept that or i can't take that because yeah, yeah, now but, time... but 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 you know but five-year-old mikey was still in the theater enjoying that movie when it came out and now that they're made a really bad sequel like 20 years later or 30 years later it doesn't mean that <laughs> little mikey who enjoyed it that day is now depressed no, but they're saying the me- it ruined the memory. I guess. Yeah, but but I, the thing I, is, no, is if, if you're living in a memory, it's yeah. you know grow the fuck up. It's like the it, people it's, that can't people bad. that can't let go of the fact that the Cleveland baseball team is now the Guardians. Which yeah, me, or yeah, <laughs> you're like a black person in Star Wars or whatever. And yeah, then, you know, it just ruins their life or whatever. Yeah, nothing. Nothing's the same. I mean, if if if, if you want everything to be back the way it was before, get rid of your computer, get rid of the internet, get rid yeah. of, uh, you know, your car, get rid of everything and just live off the grid somewhere in the middle of nowhere and enjoy watching your old tapes of the Cleveland Indians. Um, <laughs> you know? So sad. Yeah. yeah. All right. He's going to hit a home run. I know it. Oh, yeah. There it is. Yeah. I've watched this a million times. I know what's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, we've gotten totally off topic here. Um, anything else you want to say before we wrap things up? That's It's my fault. I know. I, oh, no. I it's just, fine. I see some <laughs> rants and. Especially with this show, where they're it's they're actually talking about that very subject. Well, I, th- I, so. I think this this sh- like, this show brought up a lot of good things that are sadly still relevant today. Yeah, you know, like thirty, almost thirty years later. So yeah, it's yeah, yeah. We yeah, we, we can wrap it up. That's good. For me. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, folks, you know, be good to others out there right now. Um, you know, just you know, if somebody needs to talk to you, let them talk to you. You know, if yeah. somebody, you know, is being bitchy and you don't like it, just give them a moment, you know, whatever is going on in the world. Um, just be nice to each other. That's all. Yeah. Respect that we are all human. Um, sometimes we have different points of view. Not saying that that's right or wrong, but <laughs> there's no reason to, you know, kill each other over it. But... <laughs> There's also no reason to take people's rights away. Um, so, yep. Yep. <laughs> anyways, um, I'm getting off topic of my closure here. Um, so, the, <laughs> check out all two real com. Check out the cherries that we have in the show notes. I share them every week. I keep adding to them once in a while. Um, we've got some, you know, good charities there that can help out people in this world. You know, that are good, legit charities. I researched them. None of them are going to, you know, use the money to go buy a plane or a car or something with, you know, it's <laughs> give them money, not a fucking church. Um, anyway, so, <laughs> um, and definitely don't give them to the Supreme court justices. Yeah, um, no. and until next time, <laughs> Clarence Thomas is an uncle Tom and bye. Oh, bye. Oh, 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 wow. Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.